So basically what we'll do is actually just run through the last presentation we did and um, fill in a few gaps in between and hopefully that's going to put us in a good place for this. Okay. So first thing is, what's the purpose of the gearbox? Three purposes. Uh, something to do with changing your torque so you can uh, multiply torque to box. Multiply torque, it. thank you. That was it. Torque multiplied. Torque multiplication. What's the second thing? Multiplication. Divide torque. Divide RPM. Oh, neutral. Reverse. Reverse. And the last one? Neutral. 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 Okay. Torque multiplication, reverse, and position in neutral. In here, can we identify our forward gears? How do we know which are the forward and which are the reverse with a gearbox like this? Straight, Straight cut. cut. Really? No. Where's reverse? Oh, no, the intermediate gear. Yeah. Bear in mind, some gearboxes these days are going to have a helically cut reverse. If they have got a helically cut reverse, it will not be sliding mesh. It will be, just as the forward gears are, constant mesh. And unlike that gearbox there, Max, just grab that for us. Thank you. Unlike this one here, sliding mesh, because it slides into mesh, constant mesh, because even in neutral, yeah, even in neutral, it is still in mesh. It is these locking rings that slide to the output, and the locking ring must be engaged for it to give drive. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So how would we identify reverse? With the extra gear. It's the one with the extra idler gear. The one that actually is going through three gears or two. Yeah? In this particular case, what we're looking at is this gear here. Okay? Fourth gear is crunching, grinding, going into gear. Which gears are you going to check? Right. So this particular gearbox, we can identify reverse gear, how? Straight cut. Straight cut. We've got spur gears, so this was sliding mesh. So e. to, get, uh, to get reverse gear, E, D, and K would actually engage it. Um, first gear is F and... Uh, not labeled. It is labeled. L. 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 It is with it. Yes, you're right. F and L. Fuck it Um Second gear. Yeah, we've right. got CJ. Yeah. Third gear. BI. And fourth gear, which is the one we're checking, AG. AG. Now, although Jamie quite rightly said you would be checking H, H isn't a gear. No, but it's still like. It's definitely something you'd have to check, but the question specifically was gears. I guess. Okay. If it was what component you check, actually I'll check, uh, I would actually want to check H before I check G. Because that's likely to be where the wear and tear is. Indeed. And we'll just run through that as to which ones uh, are engaged when reversing. Now the reason I put this up guys is because in the online they often give you questions like this. They'll give you a picture of a gearbox and ask you about specific gears. So in this particular case, the gears that are actually slanted like this, had it be cut, are likely to be our forward gears. The ones that are straight cut are most definitely going to be our reverse gear. That's why reverse gear winds on most cars. And we can see here the reverse idler, which is going to have to slide into mesh with these two to give us our reverse gear. Can we calculate third gear using that formula? Driven driver. Use your phone. Okay, so our power flow through there. Bear in mind, this is a three-shaft gearbox. We can tell that by the fact the input and output are on the same level. Okay. Power flow comes into 22, drops down and drives 32. So 32 is driven by 22. That's our first gear. 27 then drives 29. So it's 29 over 27. Okay. 29. So that gives us. I was right. 32 divided by 22 times 29 divided by 27. Yeah? And if we look at that, that gives us down here 1.55 to 1. Let's round it to two decimal places all the way through. Okay? So this one here, 
is turning, because this comes from the clutch, so this one is turning this one. So this is the driver, this one's driven. This one is turning this one. Driver, driven. So it's always the power flow that matters, not the number of teeth. This shaft here, what's it called? Let's start with that one. Or, it is the input shaft, but it's also known as L input. What's it called? Gears boot, button. First motion shaft. First motion shaft. Okay, what's the purpose of the first motion shaft? To drive the late shaft. To bring power, in your mind, it doesn't always drive the late shaft. It brings power into the gearbox. From the clutch into the gearbox. Anyone else but Jamie know well, what this one is? Hey. It's a lay shaft, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> and the, other cl the clue for the second name is it turns the other way. That's well, not such a great clue. Uh, opposite shaft. Yeah, it's counter shaft. Rotates in the opposite direction. It's counter shaft. Okay? You could have just said numbers and then we're going to counter. Oof. Oof. Okay. But here's the tricky one. What's the purpose of the lay shaft? So this is our first stage of gear reduction. Yeah? Our first stage gear reduction. It takes place here. First stage gear reduction. That just brings us up to the last shaft, main shaft, also known as the output shaft. Yeah? And that's the one, even on this gearbox, it forms the output. Even though this is two shaft, we've got just the first motion. Input shaft, and here we've got our main shaft, the output shaft. Yeah. Well, what's the purpose of that? Well, obviously, the fact that it's an output shaft gives you part of the name away. Yeah. To tra transmit power out of the gearbox, either to the fi final drive in the case of a transaxle, or to the prop shaft in the case of a normal variable drive gearbox but it's going to transmit the drive out of the gearbox. It also, though, is our second stage of gear reduction and the mounting point for our... What's all this? Our synchro hubs. So let's have a look at these babies. And what did we decide these were made of? Just remind me. Uh, anyway, so moving on to our synchro mesh. This actually is... When we're talking about the synchro mesh, remember, this is the bit here it's this bit that is splined onto our output shaft, nothing else. So this attaches to our output shaft. Okay? So, here we, what we've got is our synchro, and this central hub, yeah, this hub here, is the only bit that's attached to our output shaft. And when we're actually selecting gears, what we're doing, is sliding that sleeve across, to engage on these two right here. Otherwise this gear is free to rotate on the output shaft. Yeah. yeah? That is where the drive gets transmitted. Is there any sort of gears? Are they just up Right. Sometimes, sometimes there is actually needle rollers on the inside of these. Right. On, cheap, on low powered cars though, it'll just roll on the oil film on here to protect it. So those are all the individual bits. I'm not going to spend too long on. We know what the actual purpose of these parts is. Yeah? But bear in mind that the whole point of our synchro mesh mechanism is to prevent us selecting gear until... Until when? Until they match speeds. Until they match speeds. We mustn't change gear until the speeds are matched or they'll crunch. And the way we do that is by using this conical brake and the actual ball ring pushing against that conical brake to match the speeds of this with this got it and then they can slip into gear and in fact it's remember, it's so important that you can even see that this has got enough free play in it the ball cream can actually move around it's not a tight fit on the actual blocker bars the blocker bars there are those uh, inserts here yeah and it's free to float on there 
free to flow, and on its, at its extremes, if you have a close look, at its extremes, it will actually prevent this sleeve moving across. It actually blocks, uh, bulks the actual gear change, which is why it's often called a bulk ring. Bear in mind that our, our selector forks actually fit into that groove there, and that's what we move. As we start shifting, the shift plates contact the bulk ring and they push the bulk ring into contact with the gear cone. So now we've got those two conical surfaces in contact. And look at the insi inside of that. Notice the inside edge. It, you can take it and have a nose. Look at the inside edge of it. You notice there's almost like a screw thread in there. Why is that screw thread there? Push it all out. Yeah, bear in mind, if this is the time we're inside our gearbox, we want friction at this point here. Yeah, we need friction because this is trying to cause this to get to the same speed as this. That's what we're trying to achieve. So, as the bulk ring comes into contact with a cone, the difference in speed between the synchronizer sleeve yeah, and the driven gear causes the bulk ring to get dragged to the limit, just as we were seeing before, it gets dragged to the limit of its travel. So it's now it's out of alignment, the bulk ring itself, out of alignment with the synchro sleeve. Synchro sleeve now pushes onto the bulk ring, giving you friction between the bulk ring and the gear cone. At that point, the speeds are going to match. And as the speeds match, yeah, the arrow teeth on here, the shape of those teeth, you can see they're almost like little arrows. Yeah? They match up with the teeth on there and allow it to get pushed back into alignment. And then Synchro sleeve can slide across onto the dog teeth. How come if these teeth here, if these teeth here are doing all the driving, if that's where the force is going through, how come they are so much smaller than these? Because they grip all the way around the teeth, whereas the contact patch on this is just a few teeth. Yeah, we've only got three or four teeth in the big ones in contact at any one time. These ones, they're all in contact. They don't need to be as big. What is phosphor bronze? And it's an alloy of copper and tin with a little bit of phosphorus added to give it that incredibly good wear property. Okay, and it strengthens it. Grooves, as we said, dissipate all when we're shifting. Yeah, and the selector fork sits in that groove. That's a selector, for, a selector in place over the actual dog teeth. Now we also spoke about this, an interlock device. And what is the purpose of an interlock device? Well, an interlock is something to actually prevent two gears being engaged at one time. Okay. Well, actually it's fairly easy uh, to imagine. What we've actually got is the two outer shafts having a groove in them. The inner shaft yeah, has got a group, two grooves in it, and it's got a hole drilled through the centre. When we actually try and move a gear, so when we select a gear, to do that we have to move one of these selector shafts, that's what we're doing. That causes the ball bearing, it can't settle, sit in this groove now, and so it's forced into the groove on that centre one there. And now because there's not enough space for the plunger, the plunger pushes across and pushes this ball bearing into this groove. And by sitting in that groove there, this shaft can no longer move, it's locked into place. This one is locked into place by this ball bearing. So now those two shafts can't physically move. Um, the other thing we've got is the bit that actually gives you a little bit of feel to the gears. It's really simple, it's called a detent, as in detention. You're staying here, detention. 
and it's just uh, some sort of spring and ball or spring and plunger device that actually fits into grooves that are machined into the actual selector shaft and that just gives you your snickety feeling of the actual gears as you go through. On this gearbox we've seen that we've got both helically cut gears that are constant mesh mm -hmm. and we've got straight cut gears that are sliding mesh and I know I keep harping on about straight cut and, uh, uh, straight cut and uh, helically cut and sliding mesh and constant mesh is because these questions are likely to come up in the online. Okay, so a straight cut here for reverse gear, it allows us to have a sliding mesh. We couldn't have a sliding mesh with this because of the angle of the gears, it wouldn't work. It wouldn't slide in to two gears. So straight cut, sli uh, 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 sliding mesh. So head kick cut are quieter and they're stronger. Now that's something that's not easily uh, often recognised. If you look how much wider the straight cut gear is compared to the other gears, yeah, that's because these gears are on an angle and therefore longer. So the, the straight cut, they are no um, stronger? No, a lot of people think they are, but they're not. A lot of people think they are because they're fitted into rally cars, racing cars and all this. But the reason that they're fitted into rally cars, racing cars and everything else, is cheaper to make the gears. In terms of a front wheel drive gearbox mm -hmm. and a rear wheel drive gearbox, could you tell me what the differences are? Long range. A differential inside the front wheel drive. Gearbox. Okay, so the real, uh, the real proper description of that is that the front wheel drive gearbox is a... Front wheel drive gearbox has got both the transmission and the axle in one housing. The shortened version of that, or shortened name Transaxle. Say again? Transaxle. It's a transaxle. Transmission. <laughs> <and> transaxle. 